It's often said that we're living in an age of globalization and urbanization. And those two phenomena combined mean that we have many more cities, many more big cities, and many cities in the second, third, and fourth tier uh, of their national systems that are growing to provenance. Of course, urbanization has quite unequal effects. Not all cities are the same. And over the next 10 to 20 years, as we think about the future of cities, we're thinking about many different kinds of cities emerging in many different parts of the world. In the last 25 years, a lot of attention was focused on a group of cities that we called the world cities. London and New York and Paris and Tokyo, joined by Hong Kong and Singapore and others, as cities that were occupying command and control and influential positions in the globalizing sectors of those days. So banking and finance in particular, uh, professional services as well, um, logistics uh, in various ways. So the cities that became the world cities in the last quarter century were the cities that were already perhaps uh, centers of national governments, they were centers of media and decision making, they were corporate headquarters. And over that period of time, the cities that rose to prominence built upon those particular assets. I think there's good reasons for expecting that in the next 25 years, a different group of cities will also emerge we will see the continuing role of the financial and the corporate hubs, the old world cities. We will also see a group of emerging world cities, the largest corporate centers in the major economies of the world, the Sao Paulo's, the Shanghai's, uh, the Moscow's, the Mumbai's. But I think there's also every reason to expect that we'll see another group of cities come to prominence. I like to think of these as the new world cities. These are the world cities whose economic specialization is in the sectors that are newly globalizing. The digital technologies, the life sciences, the clean tech, the energy industries. It's a group of cities who specialize in higher education. They specialize in, in a mix between tourism and leisure and enjoyable livability and quality of life, combined with leading edge, knowledge intensive industries where the commercialization of that knowledge depends upon an ecosystem that's rather different to the Londons, the New Yorks, the Hong Kongs, uh, and the Tokyos. So this group of cities compete for talent, for capital, for innovation, for students, for visitors. They also compete, of course, for media attention, and they compete to host the important events in these new technology-oriented sectors. But they're also cities that, as well as competing, uh, play a particular role in the future of their national economies by providing to those national economies access to these newly globalizing sectors. So cities like Brisbane and Auckland and Barcelona and Cape Town and Toronto are cities that offer this important success model for a new world city a city that can combine participation in these newly globalizing sectors with a high quality of life, cities of a medium size, the competitive middleweight cities uh, that offer a comfortable commute combined with an excellent quality of life. Now, in these new world cities where we will see 30 or 40 or 50 emerge over the next 25 years, leadership is very important. Because these cities are smaller than their bigger uh, old world cities and emerging world cities, they have to prioritize. And in order to prioritize, they have to have strategy. So you will hear a lot, I think, about how these cities are building a vision of their future, which is based on a strategy that has been brought together by city governments, by state governments, by business leaders, by institutions and others. These new world cities are also in the business of learning. Not only are they trading their higher education expertise across the world, but they're also keen to learn from each other.